Hello, uh, today we will discuss the transverse deflection of laminate. So, transverse deflection of laminate is obtained uh, in, con uh, in uh, considering the classical lamination theory and uh, in conjunction with the equilibrium equations. Uh, in our classical lamination theory, uh, we have actually uh, considered a laminate where the stresses uh, in each layer are actually represented by the force and moment resultant. Okay. However, we did not consider the transverse shear stress in that, okay. uh, but in order, to, uh, uh, in order to analyze the transverse deflection, the transverse shear stress resultant also need to be considered. But however, uh, when we talk about transverse deflection of laminate, it is actually actually small deformation. We will consider small transverse deformation. small transverse deflection because uh, it is small so that the out of plane component out of out of plane component out of plane components of the in plane force resultants are neglected. Okay. So, what we do here is we consider a, an element infinitesimally small element from this laminated plate. We consider an infinitesimally small consider and infinite simile is small element okay we consider a small element from this laminate okay represented by its mid surface this is x this is y this is z okay and <coughs> consider its equilibrium suppose this length is very small this is dx dy okay now we have we already have defined uh, we already have discussed in classical lamination theory the force resultant nx which is nothing but the uh, sum of all the sigma x over the thickness similarly we have ny we have nxy and we have m x m y m x y okay force resultant and moment resultants okay so uh, considering a very infinitely small element of length d x and d y so we could represent all the forces and moment resultant here so this is in order to uh, make it uh, clear like uh, in order to in, in order to uh, not make it clumsy we have actually shown all the force and moment resultants in three parts this is the in plane force resultant this is the moment resultant now in classical lamination theory we have considered the force and moment resultant here because we will be analyzing the transverse deflection therefore we have also considered the transverse shear uh, transverse shear stress resultant qx and qy okay and in addition we have also considered a uh, distributed load qxy okay a transverse distributed load. So, in addition to classical lamination theory, we have considered transverse shear stress resultant qx and qy and transverse distributed load transverse distributed load q x y okay 
So, this is the transverse distributed load and this q x q y are the uh, transverse shear stress resultant. So, considering a small element whose le this length is d x is very very small and this is d y. So, we could write the uh, suppose the force resultant here it n here is n x therefore, at a distance of d x from this the force resultant will be n x plus del n x d x del x into d x from the uh, I mean you know that the from the Taylor's theorem we can uh, find out the uh, we, we can write the value of n x at a neighboring point which is at a distance of d x. Similarly, we could write n y is the uh, force resultant here and at a distance of d y this is n y plus del n y del y into d y. Similarly, we could write n x and uh, uh, n x y and this is uh, the increment of n x y at a distance of d x and in the same way we have written the moment resultants. Okay. And these are the transverse shear stress resultant it is q x here and it is q x plus del q x del x into d x. Similarly, it is q y here it is q y plus del q y del y into d y and this is the transverse uniformly that uh, transverse distributed load q x y. Okay. So, this is how we have already uh, defined in our classical lamination theory the in plane force resultants. Okay. These are force resultant, this is moment resultant. This is the transverse, this is equation number 2, this is equation number 2 and this is transverse shear resultant, transverse shear stress resultant. Okay. Uh, now, again uh, I am reiterating that this is for small deformation. So, that we have neglected the outer plane component of the in plane resultant, because when you have taken this suppose under under the transverse suppose the under the transverse load suppose it deforms like this. Okay. If it deforms like this at this point then this there will be two components of n x is not it one is this another is now if this this is small then this theta will be very very small and therefore we can actually neglect the outer plane component of the in plane force resultant however when the deflection is large we cannot neglect this say for example when you do the buckling analysis we cannot neglect this outer plane component of the in plane force resultant here considering a small uh, transverse deflection we neglect the outer plane components of the in plane force resultant. Okay. So, this uh, small element which you have considered uh, and these are the forces. Okay. So, now considering equilibrium, okay, considering the force as well as moment equilibrium, say first we consider the force equilibrium. Okay. Considering force equilibrium so considering equilibrium along x okay sum of all the forces along x equal to 0 so you can see from this figure and we can write this is the along positive x this is along negative x okay so we have written accordingly similarly this is along positive x this is along negative x and sum them up to 0. So, what we get is this. Okay. So, from uh, the considering the force equilibrium along x we get this equation. Suppose, this is our equation number 4. Similarly, if we consider the force equilibrium along y with reference to this figure here again if we sum up all the forces along y and I mean up to 0 then we get this equation. Okay. Suppose, this is our equation number 5. 
Okay. So, considering the force equilibrium along z that is considering the force equilibrium along z. So, we can write so this is along positive z, this is along positive z, along negative z, along negative z, this is along positive z. So, please uh, uh, take, take note that all these force and moment resultants are actually per unit length. If you remember in our classical lamination theory you have discussed therefore, whenever we are doing the force uh, equilibrium we must actually represent the force multiplying it by the length like in this case uh, the force this q x del q x del x is the force per unit length. Now, this is acting over this length this is nothing but d y. So, therefore, this is the force. Okay. Similarly, uh, in this case this is the force per unit length and it is active over this length this is nothing but d x therefore, the force is this the same is true with q x and q y and q x y is the distributed load therefore, multiplied by the area q x y into d x into d y is the force. So, that is how the force equilibrium is done and we get this equation uh, from this uh, from the equilibrium condition along the z direction we get this equation. Okay. So, this is equation number 6. The, here also in the earlier cases you, if you could see that this is the force per because the way we define the force resultant they are actually force per unit length. Okay. Therefore, n x plus del n x d x into d x del n x del x into d x is the force per unit length multiply by this it is acting uh, uh, on this length d y therefore, this is the force. Therefore, it is important that when you do the force equilibrium there must be that total force and not the force per unit length. Okay. So, we get three equations each from equilibrium along x y and z direction force equilibrium. Now, we do the consider the moment equilibrium. Okay. moment equilibrium taking moment about x axis again uh, from the classical lamination theory actually m x is the moment about y axis the moment resultant in the x z plane about y axis and m y uh, is the moment resultant in the y z plane about x axis. So, we have shown here the moments. So, the moments and the uh, uh, along in the about the x axis are actually summed up and we get this uh, as the equation okay you can see with reference to this figure the moment this uh, my this is the moment along x now this is per unit uh, length moment resultant per unit length therefore multiply it by this this is nothing but dx so this is the moment similarly uh, mxy this is mxy this is the moment per unit length multiplied by dy is the total therefore when doing the moment equilibrium also we must write the total moment and not the moment per unit length okay so once we do this we get this equation of course here what we have and because dx dy are small therefore d x into d x considered to be very very small and they are uh, uh, I mean almost equal to 0 okay. and using this we get this as the equation from the moment about x axis. Okay. Similarly, considering the equilibrium moment equilibrium about y axis we get this equation. Okay. Here also d x into d x considered to be 0. Okay. Now, when you substitute this equation 7 and 8 that means, the relationship between q x q y with m x m y and m x y in um, when you substitute this in equation number 6. 
substituting q x and q y from 7 and 8 okay, in 6 we get this equation. Okay. So, we get actually uh, three equations. Okay. This is equation number, let me see what was the equation number uh, 4, 5 and 9. Okay. So, we get three equations as 4, 5 and 9 are the so 4 5 and 9 are the equations of equilibrium in terms of in terms of force and moment resultant. Force and moment resultants. Okay. Now, using using the force deformation. Relation from classical lamination theory, where the force resultant and moment resultants are actually related to the in uh, the mid surface strains and curvatures by a b b d matrix as this. Say so this is our okay equation number ten from classical lamination theory. We know this is how the force and moment resultants are related to the mid surface strains and curvatures by a b b d matrix. If we expand this, we could write the force resultant and moment resultants in terms of the mid surface strains and curvatures and the coefficients of uh, and the elements of a b b d matrix as shown here in this. Okay. So, using this we can actually write this uh, equations of equilibrium in terms of strains and we also use also using the strain displacement using the strain displacement relation and the curvature curvature displacement relationship as now using this strain displacement and curvature displacement relationship where the mid surface strains are related to the uh, mid surface displacement u naught v naught okay and the curvatures are, uh, are related to the uh, jet compound of displacement w okay so we could now write this force and moment resultant in terms of the mid surface strains and this uh, uh, i mean we can write this uh, force and moment resultants in terms of u v and u naught v naught and w okay the the mid surface displacements okay so, we get this say this is our equation number say this is 11 and this is say 12. Okay. Using this uh, in using this in using this in 10 using this relationship in 10 we get this mid surface strain uh, I mean the force and moment resultants in terms of the uh, u naught v naught and w okay next uh, so we have the three equations i think uh, the equation number was 
4, 5, and 9. Okay? We had three equations. In terms of uh, force and moment resultants, okay. Uh, now, putting using the force resultant in terms of the displacement u naught, v naught, and w from twelve using. 12 in 4, 5 and 9 gives us when we put this in uh, 4, we get this equation uh, and when we put this in 5, we get another equation and when we put this relation in 9 we get the third equations. Okay. Suppose, this is our equation number uh, 13, say 14 and 15. So, we get three equations okay. and these three equations are coupled equations. Okay. That means, these are the in plane displacement, the so, this 13, 14, 15 are coupled equations. Okay. So, 13, 14, 15 are coupled in the sense that u naught, v naught, and w are coupled. And if we solve these three equations, solving these equations, solving these equations with appropriate boundary conditions, with appropriate boundary conditions, we could obtain u naught v naught and w. Okay. So, once we have u naught, v naught and w, what we can do is, so using strain displacement relationship, we can determine the mid surface strains as del u naught del x, del v naught del y, del u naught del y plus del v naught del x and We can also determine k x, k y, k x y using the curvature displacement relationship del square w del x square, del square w del y square, these are minus, minus twice del square w del x del y. Okay. So, using strain displacement relationship, we could determine, we could determine the mid surface strains and curvatures. So, what do we do now? So, we know the mid surface strains and curvatures. Therefore,
strain in global global x y in any ply or lamina could be of determined as any ply suppose k th ply where k could be in an n layer laminate k could be anything between 1 to n. So, we can determine the stress the strain sorry in the kth ply as epsilon x naught epsilon y naught gamma x y naught plus z k k x k y k x y. Okay. So, we could suppose this is our A, this is our B and we could determine the global strain in each ply. Okay. Now, knowing the global strain in each ply, we could determine therefore, stress therefore, stresses in the global coordinate. in kth ply is obtained as sigma x sigma y tau x y k is q bar k into epsilon x epsilon y gamma x y k. Okay. So, we could obtain the stresses in each ply in global coordinate x y and from there we can we could obtain the stresses in material axis. It is 1 2 okay. in in kth ply that means for each ply any ply between 1 to n for an n layer laminate we could obtain the material axis stresses sigma 1 sigma 2 tau 1 2 for in the kth ply we can use the stress transformation for the kth ply. Okay, this is sigma x sigma y tau x y therefore this is how uh, knowing u naught v naught and w we could actually find out the stresses in each ply in the material axis and once we know the stresses in each ply we can apply appropriate failure theory to uh, assess the failure or safety of each lamina that we have done already in our when we have done the laminate analysis. Okay. So, here uh, in addition to u naught and v naught which we could we, we, we could determine in case of uh, classical lamination theory we can also determine w the transverse deflection of course, this the, uh, the whole procedure which you have discussed here is for small transverse deformation. Now, these three equations are coupled equations and it is not that easy to solve them analytically. Okay. However, uh, if we consider a uh, more simplified situation, suppose we consider a symmetric laminate. If we consider a symmetric laminate, then these three equations will be uncoupled. Okay. Equations will be uncoupled. Okay. Therefore, uh, the only equation where this transverse deflection appears is the is the last uh, because uh, b b uh, matrix is zero therefore the this is the this equation 
is the if you look back that this equation number 15 uh, here all the terms co containing b I mean all the elements of b will be equal to 0 and this reduces to uh, the equation this is the equation representing the transverse displacement as the unknown. Okay. Even in the other two equations uh, there will be the coupling will not be there because you can see that because this b terms will be 0 therefore, w will not appear in 13 and 14. Uh, similarly, u naught and v naught will, will not appear in 15 therefore, uh, they are uncoupled. Okay. So, the equation uh, with transverse deflection and unknown is given by this 16. Okay. It could be further simplified considering a special orthotropic laminate you remember that special orthotropic means it is only 0 degree and 90 degree lamina that means there is no lamina level shear extension coupling therefore, a 1 6 a 2 6 d 1 6 d 2 6 equal to 0 therefore, the 16 gets further simplified and this is the equation for uh, uh, containing transverse displacement w as the unknown. Now, once we solve this we can uh, we can solve equation 17 to determine what is w. Okay. Now, to solve this uh, subjected to uh, displacement boundary conditions. Okay. Suppose, we consider uh, because because this is a sorry because this is a equation with displacement as the, as the unknown. So, if we consider a uh, say a rectangular plate of dimension say this is your x we are representing by the middle surface only say this is a and this is b. Okay. Suppose, these edges are actually all the edges are simply supported. Okay. So, if you look from the top say this is x y okay. So, this is a and this is b. So, at x equal to 0 this is simply supported okay. that means, at x equal to 0 transverse deflection w is equal to 0. Also, there is no moment therefore, m x equal to 0 kind of hinged okay. therefore, it can uh, there is no moment here therefore, m x equal to 0. Similarly, here also at x equal to a simply supported therefore, w is equal to 0 there is no transverse def deflection, deflection and m x is equal to 0. This edge is also simply supported this is at y is equal to 0 y is equal to 0 here also w is equal to 0 and m y is equal to 0 okay. and at y is equal to b w is equal to 0 and m y is equal to 0. Okay. So, this is the simply supported boundary conditions. Now, uh, these are the uh, now this boundary conditions uh, in terms of moment must be uh, uh, written in terms of the displacement. Therefore, we could use this for a symmetric laminate we, we could use this decoupled moment curvature d 1 1 d 1 2 especially orthotropic d 2 2 d 6 6. Since, it is special orthotropic d 1 6 d 2 6 to 0 a x k y a x y. 
Okay. Using this, you can write mx in terms of kx, ky, and kx and ky could be written in terms of w. Therefore, this is the these are the boundary conditions. Okay. These are the boundary conditions in terms of displacement. So, using these boundary conditions, we could solve this equation to find out what is the transverse deflection w. Okay. There are uh, different methods for solution of this equation. However, I mean double Fourier sign series is one of the simple method of solving this, where this uh, deflection is uh, the transverse deflection is represented as a double uh, Fourier sign series like this, and it automatically satisfies the displacement boundary condition. You can check that x equal to zero and x equal to a and y is equal to zero and y is equal to b w is equal to zero. Okay. Similarly, the uh, distributed load is also represented by a double Fourier sign series, and uh, where this Q M N could be shown to be evaluated by using this integral. We will not go into the derivation of this. This is done in the theory of plates. Okay, but this is how we can actually solve this. We can write this uh, this displacement as a double Fourier sign series as well as the distributed load as double Fourier sign series where W M N and Q M N are the coefficients of the displacement series and the load series. Okay, and when we put this, uh, this is our equation number. This is our equation number seventeen. This is a. Okay. So when you put eighteen and nineteen in seventeen, so eighteen and nineteen when you put in the governing equation. So this is what we get. Now because uh, this is true for all values of x and y, because this expression is true for all values of x and y. Suppose this is our uh, because this 21 is true for all values of x and y, therefore this must be equal to zero. Okay. So putting this, we can write W M N as where where D M N is. This is a where D M N is given by these expressions. Okay. And uh, if R is the as plate aspect ratio, if R is the plate aspect ratio, this is A, and this is B. If R is the plate aspect ratio, so we could write D M N this, and we can also determine Q M N using uh, that integral we have. Uh, shown in equation number uh, 20. Therefore, we can now determine what is transverse deflection okay. by putting this W M N and Q M N we can uh, uh, we can find out what is the transverse deflection. This W M N is obtained using this equation number 22 and once we know W M N we can find out what is the transverse deflection as a function of x and y. Okay. So, this is how we could actually obtain the transverse deflection of a uh, laminate okay transverse deflection of a laminate but this is for small transverse deflection so how we have uh, using the uh, classical lamination theory and then using equations of equilibrium and considering the transverse shear stress resultant okay which was not there in classical lamination theory so we have additionally uh, in classical lamination theory additionally we have considered the transverse shear stress resultant as well as a distributed transverse load qxy and we could obtain what is the transverse deflection of a laminate okay thank you